Okay. So, recording has begun. We are back on session zero. Uh, we're doing we're doing a module called Cleansing Purity. You guys have just figured out that you, you were poisoned and buried in shallow graves. Uh, you've you figured out that you have a twisting, terrible feeling in your guts. You've killed a couple people that tried to tranquilize you inside of the bar. Uh, murdered the barkeep, went out back, tracked some footprints to this uh, this shed that you believe they were carrying you to, and then killed a guy that turned into a bear. Did I encapsulate everything? The only the only thing you messed up is there's no murder involved. These people attacked us. Yeah, well. And, and there was one guy in the keep where, or in the inn that we didn't murder. He was sleeping, yes. He didn't kill. Okay, see, he didn't attack us, so he didn't die. Well, did we interrogate somebody? You yeah, we interrogated did. the old guy that I shoved my fingers down his throat so he puked. Gross. The guy's attention. <laughs> so now you guys are stare. You guys uh, found an, a hidden trap door in this little woodshed where a guy was just sitting in a chair and you guys are staring down there into the dark and uh as you stare down into the the dark from that that trap door your the the pain in your stomach comes back and it begins to squirm and twist on you now what would you like to do is there anything else inside the cat inside the little shed besides the stuff we retrieved well you got your stuff back so all the gear that you had on your characters is now on you again the uh, the guy definitely has the uh, the shears tattoo on his wrist, and other than that, there's like a few like there's like a there's like saws, maybe a couple axes, and that sled full of firewood that was covering up the uh, the trap door. I have a Can candle. We... Can I light the candle to uh, see what we're looking at down there? Maybe. Sure. We haven't seen anybody else with a rose, have we? No, just you. So you want to light a candle and then lower it down into the hole? Uh, yes. I Let me see what else I have for gear. Is there uh, just lighting the candle and looking down? Is there like a, a is it ladder? Is it stairs? Is it just a hole? How deep does it look like it goes? Yeah, the light doesn't carry down very far. Uh, there's no ladder, but uh, you see a bunch of rope inside the shed and a couple things it can be tied to. Okay. Can we, uh, let's see, who, let me. Can we send the fairy down with the candle? Do you want to go down with the candle and just investigate? Like fly Not down? Necessarily. Who wants to go down with that candle? I mean, you are the tank. Yeah, that's a good point. But can we do maybe some rolls to see what we can see? Sure. Uh, do you, right. you guys have dark vision or anything like that? Anything like that? Uh, do, do fairies? A fine question. I'm pretty sure drow have dark vision, but I don't know about half-elf drow. What What is it, Jim? Yeah. Um, yes, I do have dark vision. Okay. So you, Mr. Dark Vision, can see down into the hole. It is a hole that goes down about 20 feet or so, uh, but then you just see uh, the, the floor of like a tunnel. It's got like stonework and such down there. Fairies do have dark vision. So you see it too. The The human is left out. You guys, uh, the human can just, you know, sit there and squint. Well, I gave you a candle and asked. Can you say that again? Sorry. Oh, I gave you a candle and asked. <laughs> no, not you. Sorry, John. I said both you and the, the dark elf, you know, you and the drow, both have dark vision, and you can see down to the hole. It goes about 20 feet down, and there's like a stonework bottom to it. But you guys haven't said anything to the human, so she's just sitting there squinting. 
Is there any sort of ladder or stairs or anything? There is no ladder, but you do see some ropes inside the shed. The amount of dirt on them and such uh, indicates to you that it might be they, those might be used to go down into the hole or maybe some other purpose that gets them super dirty. Does it look like we have, um, or does it look like things have gone up and down a lot? Like, are there any, like, rub marks on the edge of the hole or anything? Make an investigation check, whoever wants to know. If you feel more comfortable, you can also make a survival check. <laughs> I feel so bad. Oh, no. That's not a good start. <laughs> All right. Never mind. Forget I rolled that. Okay, Robin, your investigation <laughs> check is good enough. You see there's a lot of rubbing on the outside of the hole. It's pretty smoothed down. Like, the, the floor of the shed has, like, rock work and such. But enough of the dirt has worn away on the, the lip of this hole that you can see that there, there have been some bodies that have come in and out of that thing quite a bit. Are there any sort of holds or or uh, posts that you could see that people would tie that to? No, uh, but you do see, now that you're looking, you see a place where the, the ropes in the shed might be tied to the uh, central pillar that holds the roof up to this place. You can see like there's little wear marks on the bottom of it, like the, the, a rope has been tied to that quite a bit and it rubs. I have all my gear back, so I have my long sword and stuff, right? You do. You don't have to fight with a shovel anymore. Can I fly down there, but not, like, too far? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Like, go down, you know, kind of, um, and hover kind of sort of near the roof and see if I can see anything else. Yeah. It is a tunnel. And it's got brickwork on the bottom of the floor. There's also a, um, there's also like like primitive stonework on the sides. As far as dark tunnels go, I mean you've seen worse. The walls are sweating, which is which is maybe significant. And there's roots coming in from outside from everywhere. Do I hear anything? Other than the uh, drip, drip, drip of water, no. I kind of yell out, well, not yell. I kind of peek my head out of the hole and say, it doesn't look like there's any immediate danger down here. Um, Renegar, if you want to tie that rope to the post and maybe we can start bringing you guys down here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to let the human do that. Um... Renegar is not the most dexterous in terms of tying ropes. All right. Raphael, have at it. <laughs> doing acrobatics over there. What are you doing? Oh, I was thinking of jumping down, but I guess I need this dexterity, don't I? Well, uh, well I mean, you, you, we were going to tie a rope. A place to leave. But if you want to be impulsive and jump down, I can take can that tell. acrobatics I, role. I was thinking about repelling. Yeah, yeah you should tie the rope. Okay, yeah. Tie the rope. That's fine. Uh, you are a capable adventurer uh, with a, a background. You're educated. You can tie a knot. Climbing down shouldn't be a big deal. So you're down in the tunnel. The tunnel stretches on before you guys. It is definitely dark. There's no light sources or anything. And like I said, the, the walls are sweating. You guys are in like a swampy area. And somehow this stonework and such is holding back, like, whatever moisture that might be outside. Oof. Do we need to work to get, um... Sorry, I forgot his name. Tan uh, Rang Rangar down? You guys are all capable of going down a rope just fine. I I'm assuming okay. you guys are all in the tunnel. Whenever there's a time crunch or something like if you guys were chased by a horde of zombies or something like that, I would have you guys make like an acrobatics check to get up the rope or down the rope in time. But as it is, you guys are all, all going to do just fine going down a rope by yourselves. And then, um, 
can you tell us what are our options in terms of ways we can, what our directions we can go? All right, the tunnel just goes on to the north, as far as you can tell. Are we at the end of it? Do you, would you, if you, as you go down it, like nothing really changes until you reach a, uh, you see like a little light at the end of the tunnel. It's like a gray sort of uh, muted light to it. And what I meant to say is it stops at the hole. Yeah, it, it stops at the hole. It's a one-way tunnel. You seem to okay. be at the terminus of this tunnel. So let's head down there. Look at the floor as we go. Yeah. yeah. Do you see any, like, normal? any scary footprints? All right, make a perception check. Not bad. Oh, they're terrible. So bad. They're always okay. so bad. And then 20. All right. Uh, Ms. Ferry, Robin, you see that this place is pretty well trafficked. So there are people coming in and out of here or down this tunnel quite a bit. And recently, there's like mud, uh, mud footprints on the floor. And uh, you're pretty sure the water would erase these things over time if they were old footprints. What size are the footprints? Uh, human sized. It's not. It's not anything particularly small or particularly big. They're boots, like you would find the locals wearing. Cool. Anything like, um, storage wise, like in here, or it's just empty. Yes, down at the. Uh... Down at the light source at the end of the tunnel, you see the outline of a bunch of, like, I don't know, boxy type things. And then, like, a weird kind of red glow. Um, hold on. I might want to cast Fairy Flyer. What does that do? Lights up things. Are we seeing any of this? Or is it just her... Uh perception you've got your candle and um if she rolls good perception she can tell you guys about it like her fairy eyes are doing very well for her right now cool okay um each object in a 20 foot cube within range is outlined in blue green or violet light your choice any creature in the area when the spell is cast is also outlined in light if it fails a dis dexterity saving throw for the duration, objects and effective creatures shed dim light in a 10-foot radius. Any attack roll against an effective, affected creature or object has advantage if the attacker can see it. And the affected creature or object can't benefit from being invisible. So it says 20-foot cube. Like, how far are we away from all this stuff at the end? It's way farther than 20 feet. If you think about it, like, our, our living room is like 20 feet across, right? It's uh, okay. the, the end of the tunnel is way farther up there. Well, can we get can we closer get... and then I'm cast uh, Fairy Fire? Yeah, uh, hang on. Wait, it says the range is 60 feet. So I want to get up to 60 feet away and cast within a 20 feet cube. Okay. So you guys make it to like near the edge of the... Uh, of the light source and you come upon a place with a bunch of crates stored to the side. There is a sort of a natural stone staircase going up and out into like a sort of white light. And there is a summoning circle in front of you with like a, like, or at least a magic circle, like a red sort of thing. There's blood on it. There's like a, a table to the side of the, the room with like bottles and uh, pouches and stuff on it. All right, I want to cast Fairy Fire. Okay. Each object is outlined, huh? Okay, so yep. everything in this particular area is now suffused in a sort of blue light. You can see the outlines of things much better. 
the the pouches on the the table have like a a glow to them now. The substances inside the bottle are reacting with the magic very strangely, and uh, you see the blood in the middle of the summoning circle, especially vividly now. There are no life forms or anybody in there. Not that you can detect. And thing is, boxes that were near. Um, can I do a perception roll or anything on sure. them? Sure. Heck, you can crack one open. I don't care. I am not supposed to be that smart. I would really like to assess what's on that table. Okay. Go ahead and make an investigation check with advantage because you have a background in this sort of thing. So uh, if you're doing it with advantage, you'll be rolling two, and then we take the highest one. Highest one. Oh, okay. Uh, well, there's one. Also a garbage roll. That's not <laughs> terrible. Okay. Above average. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. So inside the uh, the pouches and such, it's like bone dust, dried flowers, uh, old thorny vines, uh, and salt. They're stored in sacks and stuff on that table. Inside the bottles, uh, there is a bit of that uh, poison you guys have been seeing quite a bit of. Uh, it's like a very large dose of this stuff. Maybe this is where they keep whatever it is. Uh, inside the other bottles, there's healing agents and uh, a bottle of ink as well. If no one wants the poison, I will take it. I was going to say, well, you can have it. Delicious. I got for that. I rolled investigation for the boxes I'm near, or we're near. Okay. The boxes themselves have long been uh, rotted through with, like, water and stuff dripping from the ceiling. But uh, whatever was once in them, uh, it was it was solid in nature. Like, they, they brought something down in here. One of the... Uh, one of the, the boxes is actually half full of these twisty little seedlings, or little seeds. It's a strange uh, shape for one, but you can tell that it is a seed. Wait, seed or seedling? No, it's seeds. Like, these are unsprouted seeds. They're sharp on one end. It's kind of like a corkscrew. A weird seed. You're a weird seed. Indeed. Don't knock my seeds. Yeah, just okay, I make those up and put them in my backpack. Okay, there's a few too many of them to just put into your pocket. Um, like one seed is like, I don't know, as big as your your arm, I guess, since you're a fairy. Uh, so as big as my finger, maybe. Yeah, something like that. That's a weird seed. Stop it. Well, then perhaps Brandon got it and fail and pick it up. Give it to the human. Tell Well, tell me about it. Yeah, I don't hear you guys communicating very much. Just me doing the talking over here. You know you as know much what? about it as I do. I it's just picked up some seed. and some healing stuff and a bunch of other stuff. Guys, this is maybe a, met, not a medical, but probably an occult operation. I feel like we could use those seeds to trade later on. Or, yeah, plant and find out what's going on. Here, I'll come get some. I I want to pick up the stuff, except for the poison that Ragnar, Ragnar wanted, and move over and get a seed or several seeds okay um why don't you guys all make a survival check to uh for those seeds okay <laughs> survival is all about the wilderness and stuff i want to see what you guys can perceive about it okay it's not bad all right none of you has seen this particular kind of seed before 
but the sharp end and the uh, the shape of it is a an unnatural twisted sort of way like seeds don't form like this naturally this is a magic infused sort of plant whatever this goes to So these were just left, like, like it seems like all the rest of the they might have had them in there. Maybe. And, and, these, uh, and these left. You said there was a plant. You remember Lance? He says, plant one in the bloody altar, I dare you. Beat me to it. <laughs> Beat me to it. You're welcome to if you want to try. Go for it, Ragnar. <laughs> No, no. You said it first. All yours. Oh, he says it needs some fresh fertilizer. I yeah, feel like I'm getting bad have. advice. <laughs> did, we, did we look at all the, the paper scraps on the table over there? Oh, the, those anything? are sacks. I'm sorry. There was no... There was no, uh, there was no like art asset for um, pouches of powder, so I just put sacks that might have contained anything. Oh, okay. Are there any sort of books or anything over there? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, hold on, I forgot all about that. Thank you for asking. All right, it's an old book. It sits on top of the chest next to the circle. Uh, let's see. Inside, you see diagrams and uh, arcane symbols and such. And some of the stuff is in uh, Elvish. Do you guys speak Elvish at all? Any of I you? Don't. I think I do. I do. I've well an undercommon. Oh, hold on, not everybody at once. Okay, uh, Bree. I do. You do. Uh, I speak common and Elvish. Jim, what about you? I do speak uh, Elvish, but uh, I'd also, since you said it's kind of magical, I'd like to do a, a check on it, see how much I know about it. Okay, let me let me get through this line of questioning here. Saifael, uh, do you speak Elvish? I think I have common and undercommon, so no. Okay, so you speak like dark, dark elvish because that's undercommon. But also, like, this looks like it looks off into a bigger cavern. Can we see anything out there, or is it totally dark? Outside is extremely light. Like, from, from over here on these stairs, it's a lot of light pouring in, and it's a very dull, diffused light. But since you guys are down in the dark, it's very difficult to see out. Now, for yeah. let, you said you want to do an arcane check on it, like right, Ranagar? Yeah, correct. All right, go ahead. Okay, that's pretty good. The book itself is not magical, but you know a, an, a ritual whenever you see one. You see like the uh, the motions you're supposed to go through. The elvish that you read uh, goes through like the sort of preparations you have to do mentally and. Uh, how how where you what kind of mental place you have to have yourself in to perform this ritual? But it's a lot of content. You might have to study it. Uh, I'm gonna stick it in my sack then for now. Then when I get a chance, I'll read more on it. Yeah, you will. Do we see anything on it about planting and planting? Oh, like, you could we just look through? You do. You see. Um, there are diagrams of those peculiar seeds you have in Ranagar's pack. I think they're in Ranagar's pack, right? Pack. Who's what? Ifiel. Uh, Marlo. Oh, it's in yours? Okay. All right, so you see a few diagrams of those seeds, and you see, like, the... Um, you see a couple pictures of, like, the seed, and then, like, in a sapling stage, and then, like, a full-grown sort of stage. And... Uh, the tree itself uh, doesn't have any leaves on it in like the uh, the adult stage, and it has like a bunch of diagrams and writing about its capabilities, like how it doesn't actually feed off of sunlight. It has like a, a hunger for for blood and for flesh. It's a carnivorous tree. Okay. But that doesn't go into a whole lot of detail about it in this particular book. It's more of a ritual book instead of a uh, scientific treatise on what this tree is. Well, let's not plant this seed. Yeah. Consider not, nope, we're, no. What's the worst What's that could happen? 
I mean, a carnivorous <laughs> tree eats us. Eight. Nope. I want to collect that stuff and head on up that. Uh, well, after checking both sides, head on up that staircase. Okay. Yeah. Is there is there a, a reason for us to actually plant it? Because I'm not seeing it right now. If I told you that, I'd be giving the whole thing away. Feels like a bad idea. All right, so Marlo, as they contemplate that, you're going up the ramp. And seemingly form out of, like, natural stone. It, like, travels up toward, like, this gray light that's coming from outside. And as you uh, exit, you, uh, you part, like, a curtain of hanging moss to exit in out of the hollow of, like, an old gnarled tree. There's thick white mist everywhere that obscures obscures okay. your vision. It's it's like high noon outside, so it's like a, a fog that's thick, but there's light coming in from up above. So it's just a curtain of pure white shit that you can't see through. And you only see okay. like vague shapes beyond like maybe sixty or sixty feet or so. the The ground's all spongy. And your feet are passing through several inches of mud and decayed plant matter before finding solid ground. There's uh. There's rot and swamp gas that fills your nostrils upon your first breath above ground. Now, okay, I don't want to go too far before I like get the others. Right. You guys want to go with her? Or are you guys still hanging around in the hole? I think wherever everybody else goes, I'm going. All right. All around you, you guys hear the unnatural calls of things of the blight wood. There's like a hollow scream ending in a gurgle. There's wood creaking and groaning, despite there being no noticeable wind. There's also the faint humming of fast beating wings and unsettlingly deep in, in timber. How do we get back to town, guys? Yeah. Is there anything we see that's like, like, are we, are we like, um, magically farther away than we think we are? Like, can we sense that we're close to town? Like, or would have, would the, um, like, are we farther away than just the tunnel link? Uh, do a survival check, then you can, and I'll see how well you kept track of your distance traveled. Not great start on Ranagar's yeah. part. Ooh. Oh, man. Marlo coming through. Marlo knows exactly where you are. You guys traveled north in that tunnel up into the swamp, but not that far. The The swamp always has like an unnatural sort of misty cover to it. And uh, this is the Blightwood. You guys are outside of town, but you know it's to the south. Here, let me get you do on we see... that map. Yeah, do we see anything yeah. that could be a full-grown version of the seeds that we have in our pocket? Yes. As a matter of fact, the tree you came out of is a hollowed-out version of that particular tree. Let me just move you guys up into the Blightwood here. Like, you're not, not there. You're somewhere up here. You're not sure where, but uh, yeah, the, the tree you came out of is apparently either a dead or almost dead version of that fully grown tree. It's not moving or anything, but you also don't trust it. Out in the fog, there are figures moving around out there, um, slowly kind of like shambling around. Every once in a while on the wind, you hear like a, a burbling sort of... Uh, a, a burbling sort of almost speech that you hear like on the wind. Were we, um, I do I a remember. perception check or is that silly? You want to do what? A perception check, like to see if I understand the words on the wind. Is that nuts? Why don't you guys do a perception check to see what you see all around you? All of you. What was our um, 
request, I guess. Uh, like, what what did that guy ask us to do? You're supposed to come out there, uh, come out into the Blightwood and thin out some monsters that are giving them trouble while they're trying to keep it contained. All right, Marlo. Uh, yeah, you. Um, other than the the figures moving around out there, the the speech itself seems like almost words, like something you would hear in a dream. Uh, but you, as you're like panning your vision around, you'll see that this blightwood tree has a bunch of freshly cut branches. Like there are, are fresh cuts on this thing's branches and like it's, it's, uh, boughs. I'm not sure what to do with that. Um. Can I do insight? Or is it now my turn? Uh, sure, you could, oh. you could do that. What are you trying to find out? I'm trying to find out why they might be cutting branches off that tree uh, or what's happening. Okay, if you want to take a guess, go ahead. Do an insight check. <laughs> is this still alive, John? This particular tree? If so, just barely. All right, Sapphire. You're no uh, herbalist or no arborist, but the freshly cut branches uh, tells you that they are harvesting something from this particular tree. Could be the source of the seeds you saw inside, but it would be a logical leap as well. Any of the trees that show signs like this one? Uh, next to you, uh, like the, the vague shapes you can see, they all look intact. So let's like go back to town. You think? Oh, guys, I guys. I think we should kill some things. Yeah, weren't we asked to? We were asked to kill things out here. Indeed, you I were. I guess. Okay. What, what are we killing? Um, Pato, I'd like to Good take question. one of my hand axes and chop a branch off of that tree as well. See if anything happens. Okay. And I okay. Take the wood with me. All right. So you are able to chop off a branch of this tree. It seems like it's it's weak wood, and you chop right through it, like in a, a few swings. Nothing seems to react to you, like on the old tree, but you do get your branch that you wanted. Okay. I'm going to use my axe and make a little walking stick so I have something with me. Okay. All right, so you guys want to wander around the swamp and kill monsters? At least head south back toward town above ground. Sure, that sounds good. All right. Or east. But I mean, like... West is left and east is right and north is up, right? Yeah. North is up, south is yeah. is down. Okay, so head east maybe or or south or southeast. Okay. Let me roll to see which encounter you get. Hooray. Oh dear, sorry. Number two. Oh, Number two. Yankee's not here to make the roll. Yeah, I know. <laughs> do you want to make the roll? A d20? A d4, please. I only made four encounters for, for this. A four. Oh, dear. Okay. Okay. Be, be afraid. Be very afraid. Nah, if you would have rolled a <laughs> one, you should have been afraid. Well, we'll see how much we screw it up. Let me put you on the map. Whoa. All right. So, as you guys are traveling through the swamp, you guys are on high alert, right? You're looking out for things? Definitely. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, the figures wandering around outside of your, your vision, uh, they don't seem to be getting any closer. Although, you do come upon a man, like, kind of uh, just walking around out there in the fog, seemingly talking to himself. He is... Uh, Sitting there, his mouth is moving, 
his his jaw is moving and you can hear like little whispers coming from his from his face and upon seeing you he straightens up and starts walking over your way uh in a sort of like weird stiff but kind of confident stride is he covered in dirt like we were he's he's pretty muddy yes uh what kind of range is he from us uh hang on just a second I need to put some art on here. All right, this here is a placeholder. He doesn't actually look like this. The man's wearing like sort of civilian clothes, um, but it's uh, all of it kind of moves kind of strangely because it's all wet and muddy. You guys make all perception checks and such. Um, I'd also like to ready to cast and uh, talk to him if I can through my telepathy. All right, Ranagar, uh, you notice that this guy's clothes and his arms and his legs and such, do, he doesn't move like a normal person would. It's kind of like a boneless sort of shambling that he's doing, although it's it's pretty fast like a normal walk. His clothes don't flap around in his, his body like they should, in fact, if if you had to like guess, it would it's like it's a entirely a solid part. His clothes are like part of his body. Uh, I would like to hit him with an eldritch blast. Not gonna chance it. Nope. Okay. So why don't you roll for initiative? Sorry. Okay. So, damn, that's a. That's 10 damage. Let me check on his HP. It won't let me select my token. Okay. Now I selected him. Hold on. You rolled a 6 on that, so you missed... Uh, I guess he absorbed that, didn't he? Yeah, it was a 6 shot, so yeah. I okay. He probably missed it. So the Eldritch Blast hits the guy. And he reels back for a moment, and then he screams like, Rah! and then he charges towards you. Um, his body shifts in in a way that like he, the color leaves him, and the uh, the head becomes more bulbous, and his movements become more fluid and alien to you. And uh, no longer does he look like a person so much as a a thing. And then you hear an echoing cry from off to your right, like a sympathetic cry, like it's answering him. Oh dear. Um, Ken, is it my turn? Let me roll for initiative. Let me kids. roll. They roll sucky with initiative. Uh, let's see. Uh, is a roll of initiative as well. Yeah, you guys are both in here twice. Hang on. All right, yeah. Um, Marlo, you've got to roll initiative. So you got to select your, your, your token in here and then roll for initiative from your character sheet. Uh, when you delete those, Joan, I'm completely out of the turn order. <laughs> really? I saw you twice. Yeah, I saw you. On my screen, it's seven and six for the two Blackwood doppelgangers. Okay. Can you and Robin both roll initiative again, please? are the odds of doing that twice. Wow. Okay, so you guys are all in the initiative order. Wonderful. So the screaming is coming from uh, two directions now. You've got two alien-looking guys running your way. And now it's time for fight time. Marlo, what would you like to do? You're first in the initiative order. Well, okay, so I have a dagger and I have a crossbow. So I am, I don't have really good in close things, but it looks like from the map that I'm pretty close to the first doppelganger. I'm going to use my crossbow. Okay. Thirteen and six. 
Okay. Yeah, that is a hit. So your crossbow bolt takes the thing in the shoulder. Uh, what sh what should be like a shoulder bone, the the bolt just kind of passes through and comes out the other side. But the thing uh, reels back and screams again at you. He's getting close enough now where you can see his eyes, and there's no there's no irises or pupils or anything. It's just white, like the mist around you. You should take this opportunity to get some space. Is that Ranagar talking? Yes. Ranagar's so I, I have another action. Uh, you, you took your action. You can also move, and you can also take a bonus action. Oh, dear. Okay. Well, I will move back to Ranagar. Okay. And... So every turn, every combat turn, you get, you get to do a couple things. You can move, and you can act. Like, any attack that takes one action is your action, right? But then you can also move. You can you can do double the move by foregoing your action. And you can also take anything that says bonus action on it. So, like, you can either sprint 60 feet, or you can use your crossbow okay, and then I, walk 30 feet. Can I move back and then bless? Since you already took your crossbow uh, thing, you, you did your crossbow thing, that was your action. Next turn, you could bless if you wanted to. Okay, I'll just well, move back. All right, go ahead and move yourself right. back where you thought you should be. That's a bonus action or just an action? Yeah, What what is bless? Is that a, a bonus action or is it an action? Oh, um, let me look. The spell should tell you. First level... Uh... It'll say casting time. It'll just say they're one zero, action. Zero. First level enchantment cast at zero spell slot. It says level first uh, casting time one. Oh, casting time one action. There Sorry. you go. Okay, okay, so not this turn. Fair enough. All right, so the, the thing that uh, Saphiel just shot charges at you guys suicidally, and he comes up to Robin and attempts to uh, do a little thingy thing. First, he attempts to grab you. What is your, your AC, Bree? 14. Okay, so the grab doesn't make it. You're too small and you're too well-trained. Then he attempts to uh, hit at you. All right, this time it hits. He does six. Wow. Pow. My goodness. Pow. Pa pow. Did you take me down or no? No, I don't have an HP bar for you on your token. You need to keep track of it on your on your sheet. Well, shit. Okay, hold on. You gotta be more than that. I have like twelve, I think. Oh, what is your max HP value, Bree? I don't have four. What's your max? I'll put oh. it on the token. Uh, fourteen. But now I'm at four. Okay. And now I, I have now I set up. You what? You're only at four when you only took six damage. Because I was at ten from the last battle. Ah, maybe Sifael can heal you on the next round. I'll try. All right, Robin, it's your turn. Okay, um, I am going to uh, rage out, and then so I have advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. Um, I gain two bonus to the damage roll. Uh, resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Okay. Um, Sorry, yeah, I don't think we could hear you there, Bree. Oh, I was gonna say, do I? I have advantage, right? You're gonna advantage roll on? legend piercing and something. Oh, when I make a melee weapon attack using strength, I gain a two 
plus bonus. I don't have advantage. Yeah, but you do get that bonus, which is fine. We'll add it in whenever you roll. So 17. Wow. Yeah, that's quite oh, a Oh, wow. Go ahead and uh, roll for damage. Oh, I get a 2 plus to the damage roll. So 10. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. You cleave right into the thing's torso, like in his gut, and you, you sever almost all of his body. He's kind of flip-flopping around out there now. Uh, he's just barely keeping himself together. Um, my armor class equals... Oh, Unarmored defense. While you're not wearing any armor, your armor class equals 10 plus your dex modifier plus your constitution modifier. Right. So it's 10 plus 2 plus 2, right? Okay. So yeah, 14. Generally, yeah. yeah. D&D &D tell you correctly how did it, it does it. I didn't want to kill you either, Bree, but I'm, I'm working on it. Okay. Yeah, you might yeah, close. I get the heck back. Okay. Yeah. Are you uh, done, or are you going to do something else? Can I move away a little bit? Just kind of make him chase me, I guess? Not without a triggering, triggering an attack of opportunity, because you used your action to attack instead of to disengage. Gotcha. Okay. Well, Renegar, I'm going to need some assistance with damage. Hopefully. This is your first melee character, isn't it? It is. How fun. Well, if I can't save you, you'll have to let go. I'll heal you. I'm yeah. ready with my bad level one stuff. Okay, so the next uh, doppelganger uh, is still screaming as it, like, charges in on you guys. Ranagar, it's right next to you, and it attempts to grab you. Dude, what the hell's the range on that thing? It was only 30 feet. Jeez. Uh, I thought 12. that was like four turns away. You, uh, you slippery elf, you dodged that one. Dodge this next one, too. And he's going to try to give you the slam. And he still sucks. Thank God. He's so clumsy, and he, he slips right off of your, your beautiful gray elven skin. All right, Ranagar, go ahead. Uh, Ranagar is going to disengage. Okay. Yeah, Ranagar is going to disengage and move. Yeah, over there. Uh, can I do double my movement? Uh, disengage is uh, half of your movement speed, so. At least I think so. Yeah. Um, that would require a sprint. That means you couldn't disengage and do it at the same time. So I only get to move 15 feet then? 30. Like your your 30 is your walking speed. 60 is your sprinting speed. Okay. All right. All right. Marlo, what would you like to do? I'm going to heal uh, my friend here. All right. All right. All right. So cure wounds, then? If that's what you want to cast, yeah. God damn it. I'm so bad at this game. Seven. Yeah, that's a that's, lot of heals. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, that seven is a lot of heals for first level. So, Bree, you're back so up to 11. Yeah. That means I can take another hit. See, so your, your hands are glowing, and you touch your fairy friend, uh, even though she's flying in front of you. You try not to touch her wings. Her her wounds close, and she feels 100% better. Just well, in I time three for... Hit points. Do I have never move, or am I just... You can. Four? Yeah, you just took an action. Now you can move if you like. I want to go like, well, crap. If I can use a move to move, can I use a move to fight? Like, can I use my uh, sword or uh, my whatever, my dagger? No. I don't want to lose her. No double fight. However, um, like, okay, 
you took your action. Now you can move. Like, your movement speed is 30 feet, okay? That's assuming, like, you're walking somewhere. So the game assumes you can walk and fight at the same time. But if you were sprinting, you wouldn't be able to fight. So you can walk somewhere while you're fighting. That's fine. Uh, if you want to move into position to back up uh, your fairy friend, you can. Like, keep both the things off of her. You actually have the highest armor class in your party. So you might be able to keep things off of her until she's able to recover. I think you're the only one that's wearing, like, chain and a shield and all that. Huh. Okay. So, this is all an experiment. I don't know. Should I step in front of her? Like, like in front of this one, so she has time to get away from one. Like, I can't get away. You can't get away? She can on her next turn. She lies. I can, but I can't. And actually, like, like I can, I, I need to, I'm a tank, so. Well, I healed you. Okay, and the move yeah, you're trying to I make is to... to go, like, in this square, right? That has. That's my thought, yeah. Yeah, that has a couple benefits. You're going to be on one side of her and tying up this guy over here. That means that both the mobs can't gang up on on uh, Robin and take her down while you watch. Um, it also has the benefit of allowing for Robin to finish off this guy before she can help you with this guy. And all in all, it's a solid plan. It's, it's a good thing. Whenever you're sitting next to a monster, uh, if it tries to move away from you, you get like a free attack with your melee weapon. So like it's not smart for them to move past you. They can't just move through or around you. What do you want me to do, Bree? Why he just said your your plan was solid. I'm not sure if you realized exactly how solid it was, but it's a solid plan. Oh well, yeah. Okay, I want to go there. Okay, go the ahead. Circle. Move your token over there. All right. So you're engaging that that Blightwood doppelganger right there. Meanwhile. The one that's fighting with Robin tries to make his grabby attacky thing. He grabs you for two, but you're resistant, right? So you take one damage. Um. Resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Okay, this is bludgeoning. Uh, go ahead and make a uh, athletics check to make sure you're not just grabbed, grabbed. Oh my gosh! Really? Of all I the have, times like, to fail really your athletics. High athletic. So he has a. Uh, he he winds up his arm and he's about to strike at you. And this next attack is going to be a doozy because he has a hold of you. So it's your turn. Grand, but that means I can probably like hurt him, right? Let's Especially find out. Especially since I'm raging. I'm still raging, right? Yes. Okay. You're such an angry little fairy. <laughs> yeah, you're like a pissed off Tinkerbell. Okay, that's that's a hit. All right, so that's you. this time you're. Your sword comes all the way down through the thing's head and out of its crotch, you bisect the thing. The two halves fall neatly on either side. And you were right. Uh, your suspicions were right. There is no bone structure in there. Good to know. Okay. That means they're made of liquid, right? Or something. Does liquid mean water? The, um, the uh, Okay, trying to create or destroy water inside somebody doesn't work. Uh, because oh, yeah, we had a conversation about that yeah. today. Sorry. Every's bo everybody's body is like a temple. All right, you can't just defile the temple without like a contest of wills. <laughs> right. Otherwise, that would be a stupid, powerful spell. It Get would be that. ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. So next, uh, as Robin moves in to gang up on this other doppelganger guy, he's going to take a swing at you, Marlo. 
All right, he grabs you and he Ooh. he he grabs your wrist and he's crushing it for two damage. So you're gonna take two damage from that. And again, he's gonna haul off. His his arm is gonna come back. And he looks like he's going to be swinging for the fences on this next one. Ranagar, it's your turn. Okay, Ranagar is gonna reach out and touch face with an Eldritch blast. Ooh, that's pretty good. Okay, click for damage. Four. All right. Oh, um, Marlo, can you make a athletics check to see if you stay grabbed from this guy? Okay, so you're able to give it a little twist and get out of the lock that the thing has you in. Uh, and the force blast pull uh, pushes the thing off of you as well. All right, you want to move, Renegar, or you want to stay there? Renegar is going to move. Renegar does not like the place he is in. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Renegar refers to himself in the third person. I'm here for it. I love it. All right, Marlo. All right. What would you like to do? I I have evaded his grasp. Correct. He grabbed you and crushed your wrist, but you were able to twist out of it with the help of your buddy Ranagar. Well, what an asshole. You're right. Um, Ranagar is such a dick. No, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I'm thinking I don't have the firepower to get out of this guy, but Robin does. So I'm going to go. Unless you don't think so. Move away Great. without inviting an opportunity. What? Sorry. Unless you disengage, you can't do anything to leave the zone. Otherwise, I have to attack you in return. Oh, so I have to attack. Not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. You have a few options, okay? You can attack him, which is, you know, the most obvious thing. There's also a thing called disengage, which where you give up having an action by disengaging from combat so the guy doesn't get a free hit on you while you try to run away. So that means you'll disengage with him and be able to walk 30 feet in any direction. You can also cast a spell, or you can ready yourself to do something if he does something. Like, you can ready your attack to land at the same time as Robin's. Like, all you gotta do is declare, like, I ready a spell for when this happens, or something like that. What do you think I should do, Robin? I mean, I think you should just attack him, because there's, um... It's not like... I mean, there's not a... Like in between you and me, there's no, he doesn't have a chance to hit you. So, oh, okay. I well, I just a have a, a dagger, and so I was kind of like, that's or a crossbow. Actually, maybe I'll just shoot him with a crossbow, John. Is there a minimum distance like, on it? Yeah, um, this close in when he's right next to you, you'll have a disadvantage on shooting him with a crossbow, but you're welcome to try. Oh. Okay, well, is it better to shoot him at point blank with a crossbow or shoot him or just like slash him with a dagger? The way they balance ranged weapons in this game is they have a minimum distance. If somebody's right in your face, it's very difficult to aim a crossbow at a guy. So you'll have a disadvantage on whatever attack you do with that. If you're willing to take the risk, you can. Or you can just stab the motherfucker. It's fine. I'll stab the motherfucker. Or, I'm cool. Or you can disengage. No, I'll stab him. May okay. as well. Go ahead. Oh, uh, John. Yes. What do I roll to stab him? Okay. The, uh, uh, on your D and D Beyond character sheet, there should be an actions area where your dagger should be in there. Oh, okay, cool. 
Stab, stab. All right, that's good. Click for damage. So you'll see in roll 20 that your roll came through as a 17, which is great. Now, you, when you, you click on where it says roll damages, if you click there, it'll roll damage for whatever you did. Oh, nope. The, uh, the first one. Like, if you go to roll 20, you'll have, like, it'll show in the chat window that it had dagger 17, which is a hit. And then it says roll damages, and you click that to roll that particular, the damage for your dagger that you just stabbed with. There oh, you go. Sorry, I see that now. All right, so four. You stab him directly in the forehead. And uh, it, you you see the mouth open and he screams, but where brain matter should be, this guy does not have anything. So he just screams. It's very disconcerting. Robin, what would you like to do? I am going to hurt him. That's kind of what you do, isn't it? <laughs> All right, that's a hit. AFK for a second. Plus two, ten. Okay. Minus ten. So your sword is cleaving through dude's butts. Like, you slash into his buttocks area, and you, you sever his legs. And uh, he's just a torso on the ground, but he's still trying to grab at, uh, at Marlo. He's going to have disadvantage. So you guys doing okay? Is there anything I should mention when she gets back? Like, I think I've gone through most of the things you can do in combat, right? Anything else you missed? Um, I mean, if, if she's looking at the roll 20 page, when you click on the actions tab, it'll actually tell you what your options are in actions and combat underneath all of your available attacks. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. So there is a couple you didn't hit, but... Honestly, I'm not sure that'd be something she'd use anytime soon. Like the improvise, I'm not even sure how to use that one. Uh, the help one you did cover with helping Robin. Uh, other than that, I don't see anything else. What's the help one? Like, does it give you some kind of advantage? It's, uh, I think it gives the other person an advantage on their roles. I'd have to look up the actual description, though. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, I think I remember that now. See, I always see it from the DM's perspective. So, like, I'm always rolling for NPCs and stuff over here. So I, I forget exactly what players can do. Like, I forget your entire repertoire until you, like, whip something out that I'm surprised by. You don't have copies of our um, character sheets at all? I do, but I can't just flip through them during combat all the time. I'm I'm sitting here juggling, like, six NPC windows and maps and stuff. I, uh, if I had to go through your character sheets as well, the combat would take forever. I know what I need to do for you, John. I need to find you a 40 or 50 inch TV so you can open all the windows in one go. <laughs> yeah. Or get me a Rolodex and I'll print them out. The idea is journal. But that would only work for every session then we'd have to update it. <laughs> When we play in person, I have no idea what I'm going to do. I'll probably just bring my laptop. Like, what exactly would I do uh, with all uh, the stuff I have on Roll20? We all just have to pull it all up and on laptops because uh, all of my books, everything I have is on Roll20 or D&D Beyond. Actually, all of it's on D&D Beyond. Yeah, I mean, we, reason yeah, I'm I mean we can print character sheets and everything. I'm just saying, like, what would I do with all my NPCs I've made, you know? Exactly. And I think we could, what we could do is we could uh, either set it up on like a projector or even set it up on a um, a TV and turn it on its back or something like that and use it like a table. That could be fun. 
Hey, uh, hey, Bree, you want to volunteer hey, your uh, your iPad? I'm back. I apologize. Okay, no problem. Okay, okay no problem. Uh, John. Okay. Like, so okay. A new computer coming in. I mean, maybe I can give up one of my monitors for that. Ooh. All right. So what happened while you were gone? Robin severed the thing's legs and it's on the ground, but it's still trying to grab at you. It's going to be at a disadvantage, but it's still going after you with like a single minded determination. I'm not dead yet. Not dead yet. It's just a flesh wound. But he's trying to grab at your ankles, and you find it quite pathetic with your armor and your shield and such. You're easily able to defend. Ranagar? I... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. If you want to do some flavor, go ahead. Uh, can I just take my dagger and chop its head off? Uh, it's Ranagar's turn. But if he wants to leave it to you, he can. Renegar would like to do a perception check to see if we've garnered any other attention from all this screaming. All right, go ahead. Wait, is that going to take your action? No. Is no. that going to take your action? Even if it did, have... let this one go for sci-fi. Yeah. All right, perception. Uh, no, none of the figures around you guys have really taken notice other than these two. All right. Renegar is going to ask Miss Saifael if she would like me to finish this for her or if she wants to finish off this one. It's so formal. I'm right here and you're way over there. I'll just chop its head off. Well, I have spells and I am Renegar, so I could take care of it from here. Oi, you want to stab this cunt? <laughs> no. This is all in your brain. I don't talk out loud. All right, go ahead. Do what you got to do, Miss uh, uh, Marlowe. <laughs> yeah, it's Safael, isn't it? Whether you're, it's well or not. Yeah, you're stabbing. So, uh, you are stabbing with advantage. So when you roll, roll with advantage. So what am I ruling then? Is it? Um, if you want to stab it and finish it off, go ahead. Um, whatever you're doing, roll strength or dexterity or what am I supposed to roll? Oh, do an attack with your dagger, just like last time. But this time. It has advantage. Unless you want to, like, do, like, a, a glory kill. Like, are you just going to, like, get down there and rip this thing's head off? You can do whatever you want. It's very, it's almost dead. I'm a surgeon now. <laughs> okay. So click for damage and roll 20. Did, I think. No. Do you see all the, all the stuff on the right hand side of the screen, Saifael, where every time you somebody does something, it pops up on the right hand like chat window? Oh yeah, okay. I rolled damage eighteen. No, that's oh. that's dagger's attack. Yeah, that's your attack roll. That's determining how well it struck. The eighteen is a hit, which is great. Now it says roll damages, and you can click that cl that pink button right there, and it'll do the damage roll, which is a different die. There you go. So yeah, you you that is a killing blow. If you want to tell me how you do it, go ahead. I sever the head because I don't know what's happening here. All right, you're removing the head or destroying the brain. You say? Does that matter? Oh, it, it's a show of the dead thing. Don't worry about it. Okay, this encounter is over. Uh, you guys are free to move on. You guys are free to investigate the area, whatever you want to do. What do you want to do? They drop anything? Uh, these guys appear to be made entirely of organic matter. It's not flesh per se. It's like a leathery sort of, uh, dry feeling stuff. The insides are a little bit messier, uh, where it's like, it's almost like the body is made entirely of muscle and, and like, uh, nerves and such. It's like a really bad copy of a person. A, uh, can I do an autopsy with my medicine? Sure. I mean, a, a quick one if you if you're in the swamp. All right, good medicine check. All right, these things are not people at all. Uh, in fact, you're pretty sure they're not sentient. These are simulacra, um, made by either magical means or some kind of weird organic means. They never had any sort of awareness, and they have no gender or, or sex, you might say. You, 
kind of get the impression they're like uh, drone ants or worker bees. Let's go back to town, please. What about you guys? Uh, did you guys want to do anything I, while you're out here? I like, I like talking to other people. Let's get back to town, please. I'm okay with that. Renegar will follow the human. Renegar is very full of himself, and I like it. Okay. So you <laughs> you guys are traveling south toward town. Roll your okay. uh, that D4 again. I rolled the last time. Somebody else roll. The what, what I'm making them do is rolling a D4 in roll 20, and it'll tell me which random encounter we're uh, talking about here. All right, so number three, that is an encounter that's made for a different location. So congratulations. No more encounters until you get back to town. So you guys start to see like old, like uh, crumbled buildings. Like it appears that the swamp has taken part of purity and uh, kind of gone past its border. You see a, a bunch of rundown buildings and, you, and things start to see a little, seem a little bit more civilized and the mist is getting a little bit thinner. Uh, can do a perception to see if there's any, I don't know, uh, any signs of life or any signs of passage through the ruins. Okay, you don't, uh, go ahead and do a perception check. Are you staying slightly to the east of us, like, intentionally? I was at the time, yes, because I was putting you guys between me and the attacker. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm just checking. All right. With your perception, uh, you don't see a whole lot of footprints. You do see some, like, shuffling sort of prints, but maybe from those creatures you guys just fought. But otherwise, the swamp erases things pretty quickly. I know what the buildings were. Uh, the buildings seem to be old homes and businesses and such. This was a part of purity, but the swamp has taken it. Can you tell me which way the wind is blowing? There's no wind in the Blightwood right now. All right. Can we see any daylight? Yeah. Uh, there's been, like, bright daylight coming from over your heads the entire time, but it's shining down into mist, so it's just a milky curtain of crap. As you get in As here, you... though, it's it's thinning out. You're starting to see town in front of you. Can you tell me what time of day it is? Noon. Can you tell me the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? You're killing me here. Whoa, what do you want from me? <laughs> Pulling a Sam. I couldn't help it. You're hurting me. You've wounded me. Coconut but, but seriously, the, the unladen swallow. Like, answer that, please. Well, I'm going to have to roll a, a, a die. Hold on. The speed is six. That's what the dice say. All hail the dice. Uh, all right, then. All right. I'll allow that. So you guys are going into town, yeah. right? Yeah, let's um go back to the church. All right. I so mean, I... before you guys get into town, I need to talk to you about this. All right. There's a line, right? There's like a circular sort of like gently curving line that goes around the town. It's like there's blight wood, there's like twisted trees and grass that like decaying plant matter and swampy stuff on the, your side of the line. And once you cross this really weird line, it's just mud and little sprigs of grass and normal looking soil and such. It's a very easily discerned line of demarcation that, that denotes where the town is. Does the ruins have the same demarcation, or is the... Let's talk to some locals. Oh, sorry, the... Ragnar, go it, ahead. It's okay. The ruins do not. The ruins were inside the swamp, inside the Blightwood, for sure. Marlo. Oh, sorry, I want to talk to some locals. Let's, like, walk carefully through and see if we see someone and ask what they have to say. Yeah? All right. As you guys step over the line and go into town, uh, Ranagar, uh, your your stick bursts into flames and uh, and rapidly decays into like ash. Oh dear! 
Saphiel, your pack catches fire. And all, all of you, as you cross this thing, the fire begins, like smoke comes out of your pack and there's fire. Then all of you double over in pain with like that strange white hot squirming in your gut. Once you're able to get yourself under control, your pack is still on fire. Your uh, Ranagar, your stick is burnt to ash. What do you, would you guys like to do? I'm going to lay on that pack and put it out. Okay. So you've got the pack. You're, you're keeping it closed with your body. Is that right? Right. No, I'm like, have you ever heard of like stop, drop and roll? Yeah, you're going to smother it. the fire out. Yeah. Okay. So trying to smother the fire, it continues for a moment, but your armor uh, protects you from most of like the heat. But when you look inside the pack after the fire is most certainly out, your seeds are gone and in their place is just a bunch of ash. It's only the seeds though? The that's seeds are gone. Other things inside your pack are scorched, but you don't see anything that's particularly uh, damaged enough to like really set you back financially or anything. Okay, my medical pack is good. Yes. Okay, huh. So now you guys are back in town on the uh, normal side of that line of demarcation. Renegar is going to cross back across the line and see what happens. So some DIY tattoo removal. Is that a thing? Could we do that? You could if you want. You going to chop off your arm or skin yourself? I mean, the skin could possibly like break it, like put a line through it or something. I got gotcha. you. Uh, Renegar, as you go back over the line, uh, you get that same terrible feeling in your stomach. Uh, although you're you're expecting the pain now, so you don't double over. So is it worse worse uh, crossing it, or ro- worse as I stand on it? When you cross that line, it just it seems the same every time. There's pain and there's like a movement inside of you. But as I clear the line, the demarcation, it starts to fade. Yes. So if I were to stand on the line? Uh, then it, the pain becomes so much that you might start taking damage unless you want to like make a saving throw or something. You Do you really want to try this? Um, I will have you do a willpower saving throw. If I were to break the tattoo with like a cut on my arm... Um, would that, what would that cost me? You're welcome to try. Hold on. Let's do Tana. Yeah, let's, let's do Ranagar first. Do that, John. I want to well, try that. Okay. So you're, you are straddling the line that goes from the town to the swamp. Go ahead and make a will saving throw. Hey, where am I going to find Will. Well, under all your saving throws on, what are, are you doing D&D Beyond? Yes. Should be the saving throws section of your, your character sheet. I'll, I'll look on mine, too. Okay, so I've got Strength, Dex, Con, Wisdom, Charisma, and Intelligence. All right, hang on. It's Wiz. Wisdom. Wisdom. I mean, like, Wisdom says just jump over my dude. 19. That's pretty good. Okay. So you are on that, uh, you're straddling that line. The pain in your stomach and in your abdomen becomes so much. Like It's like there's a, a molten hot wire wiggling around in your belly. And just through force of sheer will, you're staying on that line. You take... Come on over here, my dude. You take one point of damage. Okay. Um... You say the wiggling. Um, is this something something that I can actually, like, I'm trying to think of the right word. Is this something that is actually, actually, like, a feeling of movement or just a phantom? Uh, you're unable that, to tell. 
Would you like to continue with your current course of action? Negative. I'm going to step into the city side of things. Okay. All right. Now, uh, well, okay. I was just doing that thing with Ranagar. Who else was talking? Oh, it was just me. I was trying to encourage Ranagar to come uh, over. Okay. I'm going to try something with the tattoo. You want to try something with the tattoo. Okay, Robin, what is your plan? Wait, did Renegar just say he was going to do something to his tattoo? No, we were talking about you. What did you want to do to your tattoo? I had to take care of him first. Well, uh, I want to um, kind of break it. Okay. So you're going to like, what? Just, I don't want to slip my wrists necessarily. I'm not trying to go deep. But, uh, oops. And But I do want to kind of break the ta the artwork okay i mean with a um, a line off the the least fatal part i guess i don't do we have to find a tattoo uh, artist to like wreck their tattoos i'm kind of confused i'm not here to tell you what to do I, i'm still waiting for what she wants to do well, I mean, I think I have a dagger. I just didn't put all my items in here for my character sheet, but I have a dagger. I could just slice it, but not too deep to where it doesn't hurt. Like, it just feels like I'm slicing my palm, you know? Okay. And then I guess I'll try to kind of walk over the line. All right, so you get that same squirming sensation and pain in your abdomen, but you're ready for it this time. You cut yourself on the tattoo, and you take one damage, but otherwise you don't notice any change. You've broken the line of the tattoo, but it's it's simply a cut, and you're not sure what you were uh, what you're looking for on the tattoo itself. Wow. Well, I was uh, hoping to see if it um, if it held the magic yeah the tattoo does not react to the the barrier or to your cutting sorry i didn't mean to push that's okay All right, what do you guys want to do? So we're back to town. Yes, you're in town. You were over the line that everybody wanted to play with, and now uh, what would you like to do? I want to find out what's happening. Um, uh, the inn was a bad start. The, the church is not such a good start. What do you guys think? Well, we killed the thing, so we should go talk to the guy in the church again. Renegar believes we should go speak with the priest. Maybe he can explain why we all hurt when we step across the line. Okay, well, let's do that. Let's go back to the church. Okay. So, you girls are walking back to church. Um, a few of the people around town are kind of looking your way, but uh, not in any sort of inappropriate manner. As you guys get to like the step of the church, you again get that uncomfortable feeling in your gut, but after you pass the threshold, you are in again. And the head, the same head priest is there. His people aren't, uh, don't seem to be back yet from wherever they are. And he greets you all at the, uh, the entrance. Like, ah, oh, you're back. How are things going? I see you're better, better equipped than you were. Tell us, tell us, why does our stomach hurt whenever we come in here? The the who, the what now? We walk across the line, coming into town, and when we cro walk across the threshold here, our stomach hurts, and it feels like there's something inside of us. Any ideas? Well, that's that would be great. not a good sign. Follow me to my office.
So he starts walking back and looking over his shoulder to make sure you're following him. He kind of goes over here. All right, let's do it. Okay, so you guys, you have to pile into his office. Position yourselves however you want to. I don't care. Okay, so he sits down behind his desk, and he's, and he's like, okay, when did this begin happening with your stomachs? Are you, have you been ill? Renegar only remembers waking up in the, in the cemetery, and then the first time we stepped across the threshold of this church, we felt it. Hmm. And there's also these tattoos that seem I've to be... I've been sick the whole sure. time. All right. Hang on. Let me just think to myself here. He, he goes to his bookshelf, and he's, he thumbs through some of the titles and such. Um, as he's doing this, you can hear like a, a sort of like shouting and uh, commotion out of the window. Like uh, you can hear people, um, you can hear people like with loud voices, very, uh, very aggravated sort of speaking or, or shouting to each other. He takes the, he takes the book off the shelf and he flips through it for a moment. And it looks like he's, he's looking through some sort of like, uh, uh, manual for whatever it is that he's looking for and he says hold on i have to examine you so which one of you wants to submit yourself for examination i'm thinking the nurse should all right i will step forward please assess okay so he comes up to you he speaks a couple words and his hands begin to like glow with sort of like yellow sunlight sort of light. He puts his hand over your abdomen and moves them up and down. And you feel like a sort of warmth uh, as the light kind of suffuses your, your flesh. And uh, suddenly the, the light kind of cuts off and he, he steps back and takes in a deep breath. Like he's aghast. He's like, and he looks at you and he says, Oh, gods. This is a problem. I'm so sorry. You have to go. Well, that's my life. So is he, is he backing up like, like he's afraid or like he's uh, aggressive? No, he's backing up like he's a little bit afraid. But you can see that he's got his holy symbol in the palm of his hand. And uh, he's ready for just about anything to happen. He's like, leave. Do I have you have to leave. The holy symbol? Yeah, it's, it's the whole. I have one. Yeah, it is the holy symbol of Theodore. It's that this temple, the, the purity god. He's like, you must leave. You have to get off the holy ground right now. You have to go. I aren't going anywhere until you explain everything. All right. The, uh, right, the, the voices outside the temple from the, uh, the, te uh, from the, the window while you guys are talking have reached a sort of crescendo. And then everyone is quiet and you can hear uh, a, a sort of like deep voice shout from outside. Like uh, he goes, adventurers. Hey, you adventurers. That guy with the symbol, what is the symbol? Is it a handheld thing? Yeah, he's holding a holy symbol in his hand. It's like a pendant. And uh, people in the clerical, or people that are clerics use it to cast spells and such. He seems can I like, snatch it? You can try to do a sleight of hand to try to snatch it. I, 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 like, to I guess you guys tell me if I shouldn't, but I want to snatch it. Adventurers, come out or stay in. Either one. You're dead either way. <laughs> Tell me, should I snatch it? You gotta make your own call. 
Oh, what do you want me to roll then, John? Sleight of hand. The voice from outside is like, High Priest Terran, by now I bet you know what's going on. Keep them in there, send them out. Doesn't matter to me. Oh, goodness. All right, so you reach out and snatch the High Priest symbol right from his hand. There's a, a glow that suffuses it for a moment, but then once it's out of contact with his skin, it becomes inert, and you have the man's holy symbol with you. Listen, you have to leave. Oof, can I give it back? If you like. Like, well, are there eight other actions that are going to happen? No, you're not in combat if right it's now. it's inert, I can give it back. And, like, say, here. The priest turns to you. He's like, look, this isn't going to work. That's Red Hand out there. That's Red Hand. You need to leave. Fight through uh, Fight through the, the whatever it is out there. I don't care. You have to get off the holy ground right now. Oh, okay. Does he give me the thing, or is he just like, get out? No, he's, he's good. You can give him back his holy symbol, but he's like, you have to leave. And I mean now. Oh, awesome. Are you going to tell us why? The things you have inside you. You cannot be on holy ground when they sprout. Okay. Why? What the fuck? All right. They put, they put pieces of the Blightwood inside us to break up the uh, summoning circle so that they can take over the town and let the Blightwood spread. Priest! Send them outside! We'll take care of things for you. Renegar heads for the front door. Okay, outside the double doors that go doors that go, go to the front. Outside. Outside. You I'm see, follow him. You see uh, a group of maybe about a dozen men with uh, various clubs and staves, and there's one man, uh, one half elf in the center he's like he's tall with like a sort of black hair and like a, a pointy sort of regal nose and can i still talk to high priest you can if you Sorry, want to anyway the the guy in the center you see him hold up his hand to like wave at you in a sort of like casual greetings like ah adventurer and you can see that his hand is has like these red splotches like these birthmarks on his hand it's, it's like it's been stained with, with wine or blood or something. His hands are both uh, like a red and and white patina. Um, yeah, I'm not going to take any other thing besides casting Elder's Bolt directly at his face. All right, go ahead. All right, click for damage. Okay, nine damage. Let me look at his sheet here. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Okay, so the Eldritch Blast, uh, you rolled really well. He catches it right on the shoulder, and it makes him spin around and uh, and glare at you when he, whenever he comes back to his senses. He's like... All right, drop them, and then you see at least three crossbow bolts of the uh, the wonderful uh, hypodermic kind come your way. Let me roll for them, okay? Wow, what what luck they're having! Okay, so one of them hits you in this in the stomach for four damage. And you can feel the poison already getting into your bloodstream. Poison? Wow. These are the same sort of crossbow bolts that you guys found at the bar. It's got that torpor poison that you guys uh, have discovered. Uh, like a magic? Uh, it It is a byproduct of plants from the Blightwood. So it's got magic in it, but you're not sure if it's considered magic. Okay. And is this enough to, like, make him go to sleep 
in perpetuity? If he's not careful, if he takes any more of those, he might go to sleep, yes. Whenever you get enough poison in you, I'll start making you do constitution saves. All right, so you're sitting there at the door. You blast at these guys. They hit you with a crossbow bolt. What do you want to do? Renegar is going to take some cover. Use the door frame as a way to provide some cover to avoid taking any more crossbow bolts. Okay. I see that Bree threw a javelin. Is that right? I tried, but I don't think I succeeded. Yeah, that wasn't good enough. All right, so you see... Like Red Hand, the guy in the middle, uh, Mirkor, he he starts waving his arms and chanting, and then thorny sort of like dead-looking vines start sprouting up in the uh, the doorway, like the the threshold of the church start growing up and around the doors, and it becomes and it becomes it becomes rather blocked. So the other guy is still here, right? Which other guy? Never mind. The yes, the priest is in there with you. He's like, you have yeah, to. Yeah, the priest. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, he's like, you have to get off the holy ground. When those things sprout, if they sprout inside the church or on on our our protected ground, it's all over. This town is dead. So, is there a way out that the you know? The front a door. Special way out? No. The windows. Like a Are there way out? alternate ways out? Normally, yes. I can go in and out of the front door of my own temple. Do you have a cellar? Do you have any? I know there were tunnels under another part of the town. Tunnels? Are there any other ways for us to go? No. Dude, yeah, there has there's, to be another way out. There's windows. You can go out the window if you like. I don't care how you do it. You have to go. Are there any Where are back you going? ways out of the church? Because I'm going to stay with you. If you can't get out... Might I suggest killing yourself? The, the seeds have to sprout inside of a living body. If you're dead, then they won't sprout. It might be the right thing to do if you can't get off of holy ground soon. Is a priest that could heal us by any chance? I don't know how to heal this kind of thing. I am a, a maintainer of wards and a ritual caster. He heal is what I asked. The priest can heal, yes. So if somebody were to say, "Give me a good gut shot and reach in and yank this thing out," I, can I go back into that other room? Sure. Yeah. If you ask him, the priest the the priest says, "My son, I I would heal you, but I feel like I should not push you towards life when maybe you should die to save everyone else." I know it sounds harsh, it, but it might be right for you to die. I want to go back. No, I'm, he's talking to Renegar. Oh. So wait, if we were to get a good gut shot, reach in and grab the whatever the seeds, then the seeds would die, and then you could heal up. Oh, you could try to pull it out if you like. I I will have you make checks for it though. There will be rolls involved. Yeah, but I was talking to the priest. The priest, um, like you're, you're asking him for his expertise. He's like, I've never done this before. But every time somebody, uh, whenever a similar case has come in, I have not been able to remove the, the, the sprout without killing them. It's twisted up in your insides. It's, it is growing inside of you. There's a root system inside of you. Listen, Quick, I, pull out that book that, and see if there's anything in it. I'm not an expert. If you really if you really want to get help, maybe you should try the druid circle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move down and collect that book that's, that's on our map. Okay. It is a book on runes, wards, and protection rituals. So wait, the Druid Circle, how far away is that? How can we get... Hold on, I'll take you guys to the over map so you can see. 
All right, if you look at the town, you guys are at the church right now. The Druid Circle is a little bit of a trip down the road over here to the east. Could we escape out of, um, could we escape out of a, a window that is perhaps not being watched in the southeast part of the church or the northeast part of the church and then rush off to the I was trying to get the druid to tell us that. Uh, the priest. Yeah, he was he was telling you can go out the window. He just seems very concerned to get you out of the church. Well, I guess it's time for see daring do of escape. All right, so let's pick a window and go. Okay. Uh, okay. Robin, you have a great axe, yeah? Not an axe, a long. Okay. So I'm going to blast out the window on the west end of the uh, church, and I need you to take the one out on the east side. At okay. the same time, so they have 50 50 chance to come get us. Who do you want me to follow? Okay, uh, upon blasting the west uh, window and breaking out the east, you you hear a cry of like somebody shouting from uh, from the west, like they're over here, they're over here. So we have time on the east to jump out. Follow both of us. We jump out of the window and run. How far? You know. How does? Go ahead and make a stealth check for all of you. That's good. That's bad. That's good. Okay. So everyone but the fairy has very light steps right now, I guess. What is wrong with you, Robin? But I can fly away. I mean, I guess I'd probably, like, run into a barrel or something. Make yeah. A big collision. So you knock over, like, a especially big barrel of communion wine or something, and it falls over. And uh, you can hear shouts from the other side of the church, like, we've been bamboozled, and you can hear people running your way. And you see Red Hand come out from the uh, the side of the church, and his hands start to move again, uh, about to cast a spell in your direction. All right. Taking Eldritch Blast to the face. Try it. Man, you're rolling really well tonight. Damage. Go ahead. Four. Can we take cover or anything? I mean, okay. there seems to be a lot of stuff for us to take cover. You should probably keep running and try to get to the, the Druid Circle. Again, uh, your Eldritch Blast hits him, and it, it breaks his concentration, and his spell fizzles. He's unable to cast whatever it was at you at this time. And he stands up straight as soon as you guys get out of range, and you keep running. And he's like, all right, run. It won't matter. We're about to be free. I don't care where you sprout sacrifices. And he just watches you as his band continues to pursue you toward wherever it is you're going. So is it stupid if I continue to just like drop water over them? Because that's hilarious. But You may douche them if you like. I, <laughs> I won't. <laughs> But if it's funny, I will. It's fine. Um, okay, what is your destination, guys? What is our destination, guys? The Druid Circle. Okay, so you headed straight there? I would think so. All right. Unless people were Maybe. Can we us. select that like dwarf or something from the inn? Uh, maybe that was silly. Do we need to double back or, or make a twisty, turny thing to avoid 
people I don't know, that's my first does it time playing D&D. I don't know. If you guys would like to do that, it will give you advantages on the things I have planned for you. Like if you play it smart, you will get you you will have fewer negative consequences as far as I can I can do. I I want to visit the inn and get that dwarf who hated us. Halfling. We don't need to get him though. Like he's not part of this story. This part of the story. I don't Okay. Never mind. Sorry. That's, but it's I a sandbox. You guys get to, to do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, but we oh, but like, like we all have these houses following. are all these houses are full of people and things that we could like get. Like they could help. There's a pink salmon thing over here that looks like full of NPCs. But we have guys following us and we have seeds in our bellies that need that are about to sprout at any moment. Yeah, have you ever been pregnant? <laughs> Let's go mm, visit that yeah. yellow thing. What do what? you think, Ragnar? I'm sorry. I'm thinking what do you we just think? should... what, do we go see what that like a uh, salmon roofed thing is? Or the inn, or should we just finish the thing? Well, I, I to follow the priest's advice and get the heck out of Dodge before we die. Yeah. Nobody, well, there's that. Nobody said that visiting the circle would finish anything. It's a lead. We haven't finished it. Like, there was more stuff to do with the inn. Yeah, and we have something in our gut that is at any point going to just break out and turn us into a tree and kill everybody. So if we don't move, we're going to die no matter what. At least if we go to the circle, we have a chance of living. Okay, you guys go. Okay, bye. All right. I'm coming, just, yeah, <laughs> you leave. Okay. So on the way to the circle, uh, we're, uh, whatever it is like, um, Marlo, you were, you were like tapping people on the shoulder and said, there's, there's something back behind us or whatever. What was it? Were... Well, the, uh, yellow, that yellow. I have to fix my map. Sorry. That's okay. Oh, the salmon topped building, that one that has like a three corners. Uh huh. The inn. I just wanted to visit them. Okay. Well, um, right now you're being chased. You might not be able to visit things like you want to right now. But there's no guarantee you won't be able to in the future. I mean, you can stop, but I'm just saying that it might lead to your character's death. Oh, no. I I didn't know we were being chased. I thought we got out of that unscathed. Ah, uh, gotcha. If we're being chased, like, fuck that. Yes. Okay. So, you guys are running across, like, the muddy fields and such, and along, like, the, the road. That's Everything's wet and dirty. There's rocks everywhere trying to trip up your feet. And suddenly, you, you go between these trees, and suddenly everything is lush and green and full of life. Everything's got leaves on it. Uh, there are vines everywhere. There's flowers in bloom. And you can safely say that you have made it to the influence of the circle. It's essentially, there's a set of like standing stones up on top of like a hilltop over here inside of a glen. There's a, a, a pool over to the east with like tents around it where the druids appear to live and work. And... If anybody knows anything about plants, it appears to be this place. But I am losing my voice, and we might have to finish this up next time. Okay. You might hear me getting rougher and rougher as time goes on. That's all right. So uh, this is awesome. We finally figured out where we're going to... Can I go directly to, like, the stone it looks like there's a stone yeah this is all things you can go to um there's like a, a natural staircase leading up 
like the steeper sides of the hill to like the druids uh like main gathering area over here there's living quarters over here you guys can talk to somebody next time but right now my voice is about to like really screw itself over if i don't stop uh we'll schedule another one of these later this week is that cool with everyone yeah tell me this time please i did tell you this last time what she told you yesterday Oh, yeah, no, I just happened upon it and was like, oh, we're gonna, and we didn't. Oh, I, I thought I told you we were gonna do it tonight. It's possible, but yeah, oh, let okay. me know. All right, yeah, I will. <laughs>